Well, hello, good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from news up here at Desawe Kanda. Also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279. All across the world on 3news.com. Tonight here, the calls have been heightened for the law on the declaration of assets and liabilities of public offices to be amended but the difficulties and should be changed we speak to a member of parliament who has concerns plus a lawyer on this matter in the wake of the Sicilia dapa stolen money saga also complaints are rife about bribery and corruption in the accessing of public services in ghana surveys have confirmed the same tonight we stay on the passport office and the lands commission we visited that place earlier today as always, join us with your comments and your experiences. Also, rather tragically, five people have been confirmed dead in floods that affected parts of the northeast region. We have the latest development, including the hearing from the Ghana Meteorological Agency uh, for an update on the situation there and how the rainfall pattern will be in the coming days so this is something that especially in the people in the northeast region and most part of the northern region want to stay with us here and hear from the ghana meteorological agency as always let's hear from you the hashtag we're using is ghana tonight on facebook and twitter let's get talking well, let's settle for ghana brief ECOWAS Army Chiefs will meet in Accra on Thursday, August 17, to discuss a possible intervention in Niger, where a military junta held a coup last month. Ministers of Defense, Interior and National Security have been meeting with Parliament's Defense and Interior Committee, but International Security Consultant Colonel Retired Fester Sabwaje is questioning the basis of a military intervention in Niger. He said Ghana could compromise its national sovereignty should it contribute truth to the ECOWAS standby force. So far, Ghana has not told us what the risks are. You see what I mean? He's just saying that we belong to a multilateral organization called ECOWAS, signed the ECOWAS Treaty and so on and so forth. Does that mean that when ECOWAS is going into a ditch, we go along with ECOWAS into the ditch? Then the government has not told us where it's going to find the means to support this endeavor. Some have suggested it's going to come from France. Look, we're going to compromise our sovereignty. So there's no free lunch anywhere in the world. And I want to suggest that given the economic circumstances that we are in, it can never or it will be very difficult in the national interest to spend money on this intervention. <music> Former Nigerian President General Olusegun Obasanjo has blamed poor leadership and governance for the continent's woes. He believes change can only occur if the youth take a key role in governance and positively change the narrative. He was speaking at the 15th African Youth and Governance Summit at Mankesim in the central region. Listen, of course, for the situation we are in is simply, let us put it as it is, is simply leadership and governance. We are in bad shape. We are in bad situation because leadership and governance in our different countries, in our sub-region, and indeed in our region of Africa has not been what it should be. Former Second Lady Matilda and Mr. Arthur has faulted the traditional and political leadership for the underdevelopment of the Western region. Speaking at the opening of a Western Regional Development Forum by the Nana Kobna in Ketia IV Trust, Matilda and Mr. Arthur lamented that the Western region has been neglected and has no legacy. Where have you been when all the lands are being taken over by Galamse? Some say that you have sold our lands. Some say that you have fronted for big men. And some even say that you have been given huge amounts of money. Nananum, I will lie more. Did you collect those huge amounts? Or the small amounts just to allow our waters to be polluted and our lands depleted? What is left of the lands that our forefathers guarded so jealously? And how faithful have you been 
as custodians of their lands. Nine victims in the Wasio deferment case gave testimony before the judge on the first day of the hearing. The case, which was not open to the public, stretched for over two hours, with the accused unable to directly address the victims. To try and rehabilitate them in a sort, so we are, we are taking every step that is necessary to secure the witnesses. But the witnesses were quite, quite graphic, and you wouldn't believe they were children. They told the story in a very, very consistent, very coherent manner. We want to make sure that all the children that are involved we are able to take all that testimony before we bring in the technical people like the investigator, the medical doctor to come and testify. Managers of three hotels in Dansoman and North Kaneshi in the Greater Accra region have been arrested by the police for failing to issue value added tax invoices. Assistant Commissioner of the Accra Area Enforcement Team of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Joseph Annan says the three will aid the police in investigations as part of enforcement of the test purchase program of the authority. Last year, the, the collection for VAT was 646. There are about million cities, Ghana cities. This year, it has jumped up to 1.2 billion average. That is by Bank of Ghana Governance Report. They established you know, collection for VAT, which works up to around 92.4 percentage increase in the growth of VAT. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Now, let me show you this. The, there's something happening in the, the northern part of the country and in fact when we received this from one of our viewers about a particular school in fact the two schools uh, that children there don't have furniture and they're having to be there and learn on the, their bellies And that's what you're seeing on the screen there. The very, very unfortunate situation. And that, this is what we got from one of our viewers there. And these are two schools in there, in Nalerugu specifically. And the schools have six classrooms without furniture. This is the Baptist Basic School and EA Basic School in Nalerugu. These children don't have furniture to learn in the classroom. And this is not peculiar to those, just those two schools, specifically the Baptist Basic School and the EA Basic School in the East Mampushi Municipality in the Northeast region, where children are lying on their bellies to learn. And that is a reflection of most of the schools in that particular area. And this is a fundamental concern that has been raised that impacts specifically on the state of basic education, and especially the hard to reach communities in this country. But that's the discussion we're gonna be having in the coming days, because we are putting a number of such videos together. This is just one of many that we have received from our viewers on this. A number of you already sharing your views on this particular issue, but stay with us. This is something that in the coming days we're going to spend some time on in the wake of the calls for government to consider a review of the free senior high school so that the money that will be saved in there, some of it can be tossed to take care of the basic education situation in the country. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. To raise fundamental questions on the issues of the asset declaration and matters arising, especially because of what's happened in the case of Madame Cecilia Dapa and also the revelations and the inconsistencies that have greeted this particular 
issue as it became public. Fundamental questions have been raised about the asset declaration regime and what has to be done differently to make it bite. So that beyond the anger and all the sentiments that we're expressing, something concrete can be done to ensure that the law will take care of such issues, regardless of who is in office as president or otherwise. But take a look at the list of people who are supposed to declare their assets and whether we have records of them doing so. Apart from the president and the vice, the speaker of parliament, deputy speakers, members of parliament, ministers of state and deputies, chief justice, supreme court, chairman of, of the regional tribunal, all these people are supposed to de declare their assets before they, they're even sworn into office or they take up any appointment as public officers into office. Take a look at this. Shraj, ambassador or high commissioner, secretary to the cabinet, governor of, this, of, of the Bank of Ghana and the, the, the deputies. Chairman of the Electoral Commission and deputies are also supposed to declare their assets. Chairman of NCC, officers in the armed forces. Then look at this. Presidential staffers and the aides. Presidential aides and staffers are also supposed to declare their assets. And as assistant inspector of taxes and above at the GRE, DCs, police officers of a higher rank, and even including the IGP and officers of the prisons as well. All of them are supposed to declare the assets. Is a member of parliament for the Doma East constituency. He's joining me in the studio for a conversation on this. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. Thank you very much, Avery. How, have you declared your assets? I've declared my assets, Alfred. It was the first thing I did immediately I was elected. So before I was sworn in, I declared my assets. And it's a, a, a reflection of the true state of your assets. It's exactly what I have. I see. So we we'll won't we'll find $1 million in your room. <laughs> I'd have bought you a new brand new base. <laughs> if you had $1 million. Exactly. But yes, you won't find it because I, my salary doesn't come up to that. And I can't do any other work unless the um, speaker gives permission to do that. So clearly, I cannot have such an amount of money sitting in my room anywhere. I see. So when you were to going through the process of filling this asset declaration form. What are some of the issues in there? What's your problem with the asset declaration regime itself? I mean, it's not that I have a problem with the uh, asset declaration regime, but obviously it is a bit laborious and cumbersome. It's difficult. What do you mean? Because so if I wish I had a copy of a large your document that you're supposed to go through it every time to write everything before getting it done and go submit it. Where you could have just sat behind your PC anywhere in Ghana, just input all your documentation and then submit it and it would have been easier. I think the latter sounds more easier for everybody to assess these documents and be able to declare their assets than what we are going through now with the forms, the paper form, that it's a whole book, like, like a book. Uh, there are two, four-page paper, mm -hmm. first page, second page, third page, and four, that you have to fill it, right? And I think there are a lot of people that may not be able to go through the process, especially if you look at the people that the acts have asked them to declare mm -hmm. their assets. I mean, so it's quite a tall list. Yes. In fact, if you look at the... Uh, the list of persons as um, <laughs> indicated in the Constitution, specifically the Asset Declaration Act 1998, Act 550, President, Vice President, Speaker, mm -hmm. Minister of State, Chief yes. Justice, Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Chairman of the Regional Tribunal, Ambassador, High Commissioner, Secretary to the Cabinet, comes down all the way to members mm -hmm. of Parliament and so on. Quite a exactly. lot. And mm -hmm. The exciting part, mm -hmm. presiding members. We have presiding, presiding members. members in there, Secretary of Metropolitan and Municipal District Assemblies. We have head, head, uh, the heads of accountants, internal auditors, procurement officers, planning and budget officers in finance. A lot of these people, even mm -hmm. police officers and uh, prison officers are all supposed to declare their assets. Police officers? Yes. Oh, oh, the, of, <laughs> the, police no, officers. No matter their rank. <laughs> police officers. So, Officers of the police service. Yes. Are supposed to declare their yes. assets. 
But my so, point is, so the inspector in my village, Kobedia Supra, who has run through or has rise through the ranks, mm -hmm. may not have access to this. We have to go to the Auditor General's form, um, office in my district, go through a whole process to get the form. When he could have just sat behind his machine, called his son, maybe, oh, Kwame, help me to fill this form. And they could have declared it easily. And, and everybody would have had access to it, and it will, it will be okay. So what is, what's the current process? So you, you, you fill this hard copy. Copy. Sorry, you download the hard, hard copy. Hard copy, or you go to any you know, of the offices and get the forms, come and fill it, and, you, and it's attach the documents, or sometimes you state the documents, or sometimes you find a way, and then you go and submit it. To the Auditor General. To the Auditor General. Sealed. Sealed. And you can't open it. So how do you check the corruption in there? How do you fight it? Because exactly what we are facing, are, somebody will say, what did the former minister declare? Mm -hmm. So we, we need a court order. Exactly. To have the Auditor General open that So what about you giving us the opportunity to be able to update it regularly? Where you cannot make changes, but you can update. Because Alfred, a teacher who has been able to be elected as a minister, at first was using a motorbike. Mm -hmm. Now, when he came, he had a loan to buy a Land Cruiser. But he declared his, uh, his, his assets before swearing in as a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. So he declared his motorbike. Mm -hmm. Now, he has a Land Cruiser. How does he declare that? You have to wait for four years. Yes. So it's at, at the end of the, the four period, years, four then you years, come back. You, de you declare. So therefore, then somebody comes because probably during his time as a member of parliament, he saved. But somebody wouldn't appreciate the fact that the man saved. But he would say because he was a, 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 a politician, that's why he has acquired that. But you know, the, you, you know my problem with this? But so, so your, your issue is that instead of at the end of the four years, you come and update and say, now I bought a car. When I was coming in, I had, I had a bicycle. And that's what I've declared on my form. When you buy the car, now that you've been given a loan as an MP to buy a car, you, have, you, you should be given the opportunity to go and update your asset declaration exactly. form that now you are the owner of a land cruiser. Exactly. So that tomorrow, you won't come and say that, how did I acquire the land cruiser? But the, the source of your land cruiser will be declared. It eventually. depends. It depends. You may not know. You may not know. But you bought your land cruiser with the car alone. But what about if it's not alone? So you didn't buy your Land Cruiser with a loan? I don't use a Land Cruiser. <laughs> I, see, but, I don't use a Land Cruiser. Wait, see, but it, you see, that's where the issue is. But let's, let's stay with me. Paul, Paul Chum Berryman is a member of parliament for the Domai East constituency. Martin Pebble is joining me on Zoom. He's a private legal practitioner. He's the leader of the Kumi Prekorilo Day demonstration. So Pebble, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. So this is the argument that the MP in, in the studio is making, that instead of this asset declaration in the current regime where before you assume office you declare and then after you, you, you before you leave office you declare after four years it should rather be amended so that they can update it on a yearly basis will, will that make any difference super duper right yes i'll say super duper because that's actually been one of the recommendations in uh, one of the cutting edge researches done by Transparency International as far back as 2013. Yeah, so in that paper, Transparency International, uh, having been funded by the European Union, the European Co uh, Commission to do a paper on asset mm -hmm. declaration law, etc. Yeah. You see that they make that point that, look, it would be useful to have the declarations be you can have a four-year system, mm -hmm. okay, and also the person that it should be done yearly as well. So there is the but the yearly one would be that you update it if you bought. If you haven't, then don't. But it comes with consequences consequences that if you don't update and somebody goes to lodge a complaint and then there are uh, what you call investigations and it's found that you had acquired a certain asset over a period of time and you didn't uh, update it, then you'll be in trouble. Yes, because some, I can imagine that 
somebody too may say, or let's say a public officer may say, okay, maybe over a period of four years, he has been struggling. So he hasn't acquired anything that will require any new declaration. Yes, of course. It's not every public officer that will make so much money. No, let's look. Some will make illegal money, others may not. So we can couch the provision in such a way that, look, there are the mandatory ones every four years. Then there are the ones that we say, look, we are not compelling you by it's open that as and when you buy a new asset, go and declare. If you don't declare, it still carries the same consequences. Yes, and I think with that, we'll be there. I mean, like, at least we'll make a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. At least that's what the paper that yeah. I, I, I prefer to I see, face. but I, I'm looking at the list of people who are to declare the asset, which we put on the screen earlier, and police officers, prison officers, senior officers, and so on, presidential staffers and, and aides, will the conduct of public officers bill, as we're currently pushing for, make any difference or improve on the system as we have it now? So, of course, if there is somebody who is a chief inspector, and we know that his, uh, what do you call it, his income is way uh, uh, above what he earns, or he has property way above what he earns, so, there is opportunity to uh, report him, okay, to the police hierarchy, and he'll be dealt with. But if we are seeing that maybe with modern times, we are thinking that even inspectors should be roped in, why not? We can look at it based on research. So, but, well, lawyer Matic people appreciate it, but stay with me. Let, now, let's take a look at this. And, and, the, the, these categories of persons and whether really this is going to make any difference. But Mr. Pochum Bremer, is the Doma is member of parliament, still with me in studio. So how, how much of a difference really? Because you say you've declared your assets. So then what's the issue with this? But so my, so my point is we need to, but one critical part of it, the whole of this is that based on what we have, can Auditor General tell us that all these people have declared their assets? Obviously not. Haven't we broken the law? Mm -hmm. and, and there's a punishment for not doing that. It's, and it's a statutory something. So how are we ensuring that these things are done? How are we ensuring that, listen, people do the right thing so that we will be able to check and fight the corruption that we talk about? Because don't forget that we also need to make the, uh, the, the forms and make the process accessible and friendly to them. Because if I've, <laughs> I was employed as an SS, um, let's say SS staff, I've run through, the, I've rise through the ranks and become mm -hmm. some senior officer. And I'm not, I mean, I've, I've not been used to this. How do I do it? Well, but if you, if, if, you see, if you're able to, Bring it to me, to my doorstep, that listen, go on the net, that everything now, mobile phone is accessible. If you will send, if Auditor General can send us all messages, that, oh. But, but you know that you're supposed to declare your assets. Some people don't know. Oh. I can confidently tell you. you. Ignorance of the law is obviously. So, therefore. Excuse. There are institutions that are supposed to. So, therefore. To, to know this. So, therefore, how are we enforcing it? To fight the corruption. The, so the current asset declaration regime is weak. <laughs> but that is what we have now, because if we are saying, because can you tell us that 261 presiding members, have they, have they, all of them, have they declared their assets? Can they say the 261 district chief executive or MMDs, have they, have they declared their assets? There must be something more than just making the process a bit more... So then, then the people who, no matter how you digitize this or so, so then, if they want, they don't then want to the other leg that I want to talk about is the NCC. Mm -hmm. Then NCC must also help us to understand why that if you're a public officer, it is a statutory uh, requirement that you declare your asset at a certain point. Because Pol police officers, because as we and sit, prisons officers, as we sit now, if we want to go into this, trust me. You can have about almost about 40 to 50 percent of public service and agencies workers who have flouted this law. 
Do you know any of your colleague MPs who haven't declared their I'm sure. If you go through, you may find one. But after the last time I checked, everybody have declared because the speaker was very firm on that. That all MPs should go and declare their assets. He was very firm. But can you say that for the other arms of government as well? That is why. The executive? We, I'm, for that, I cannot, say, I cannot speak for them. The presidential staffers? I cannot presidential speak. staffers, have, oh, staffers are yes, supposed to they, declare their assets. Yes, right? the presidential staff and eight. I think, you see, when, when, when we don't take care as a country, we will, we, will, we will have a lot of laws, but nothing will work for us. Because mm. this, for me, is something that can fight corruption to a certain stage for us. The asset declaration. Yes. Because really and truly, if <laughs> the former ministers have declared her assets, probably we would have known what she's declared. If she has had opportunity to update in the course of the year or four years, we would have known what she has added on. And indeed, even that update can trigger some sort of I mean, in inquiries. Because you can't tell us that your salary is about 15000 and all of a sudden you come to tell us that, oh, in two years, you've bought about $2 million mansion. Mm. Obviously, if it comes. To raise fundamental questions. Exactly. So any person who is in charge of that one can read red flag that, no, Fortune Berman is selling us, he has bought a $2 million mansion in less than six months, knowing his salary. Please, we need to inquire. But that's the evidence we're seeing, that people get into politics, and in the very short period, they acquire property through very questionable means. And they're making money at the expense of the Ghanaian Alfred, people. I can confidently tell you. You see, you, you, it's the tallest. Mm -hmm. But when we go through the list, the president have declared, vice has declared, speakers, they've all declared, members of parliament, I'm sure they've all declared, the ministers of state will also follow suit. But trust me, let's go beyond. The vehicle examiner, the vehicle examiner level, rank of vehicle examiner, as DVL is supposed to declare. Let's go and find out if they have declared. Those are the technocrats. Well, well, you just told me that you can't state whether the, yeah. the, I the, mean, the executive, whether they've we have the, they ensure see, that all the ministers if, have declared If, if we want to go so, through this, mm -hmm. if we want to go through people who have acquired a lot of things that we don't know. But you see, in the end, the politician cannot also be excused from the corruption that we, goes on. You see, we, uh, we, we cannot. We, that's what we, we, you see, we are played to it sometimes. And, and, and you need to have that sort of character to be able to move away from it sometimes. Because sometimes you'll be there and a document will be brought to for you to sign. You may sign and rather realize that, ah, this document was the wrong document. So but you have to be vigilant. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it's not all of them sometimes. Let's be frank. Mm -hmm. Once a while, you may go off, which is wrong anyway. You cannot be praised for that. But the technocrats will aid us. No, no, and no, member, no politician who come and just say, oh, I know how to serve, I know how to do it. If you go to any ministry, you need somebody to take you through. I can confidently tell I knew some ministers who were deputy ministers who didn't know even how to minute, a doc minute on a document. You didn't know how to minute a document? Yes. So when you go to the civil service, they will teach you how mm -hmm. civil service minutes their documents. Hmm. Would you support, in fact, there have been calls for the public declaration of the assets of people, in addition to these proposals that you are making as well? So that, Portum Berima, if you say that you don't, you, before you took over or you became member of parliament, you had a bicycle. And at the end, you, you have two vehicles. That asset declaration should have been made public. Then everybody will see that, yes, indeed, this is what you you're see, saying. So, we can. so you see why the regular updates would have been better for this. Because mm -hmm. now, if I come with a bicycle and I end with, two vehicles. Definitely the person down there would think, no, I have a mass of wealth somewhere. Will not understand it. But the would, source of your wealth. But you see the question don't, about don't, the source of Don't forget of it that would answer that. Don't forget the, that when the, I was using a bicycle, when I was using a bicycle, I was a teacher. So my salary was at a certain level. When I became a member of parliament, my salary may have gone up. So I could save to buy certain uh, to buy another uh, another vehicle, not necessarily going for a loan or using government money. There's evidence of the source of exactly. wealth. Exactly, but mm -hmm. so if I declare it, and you, you I mean, you get to know right. that oh, in right. the in, in 2022 he said, I mean, he's now earning this amount. So in this amount, yes, because 
as part of the declaration, you also declare your, um, your bank statement Indeed. and all that. And so this conversation is going to continue. In, in, in fact, Martin Bebo says it's, it's a good idea and that really there's been some research that supports that. So you are a member of parliament. Right? So this matter and this particular call that you're making beyond this particular conversation, let's see how it plays out, especially because of what's happening in this Cecilia Dapa case and matters arising. Well, Martin, people, you have and, and, and also made the point about the Conduct of Public Officers Bill, which we would also deal with um, in the coming days on this matter. But Paul Chumberma is Member of Parliament for the Doma East Constituency. Look at the, they should reclassify how they're going to do this corruption index, uh, perception index going forward. Yes. Well, That's very much, people. Indeed. Thank you very much for your thoughts on this. In fact, your comments actually leads us to the next conversation here on Ghana Tenant. Coming up next, uh, complaints are rife about the bribery and corruption in accessing public services in Ghana. And that survey that lawyer Matthew people you made reference to is the basis for this. And, and a number of you are still sharing your experiences in, with the passport office. But today, we visited the Lands Commission as well because per this UN survey, the Lands Commission actually came tops, number one, as the topmost institution that people there have been demanding bribes before they, they offer public services. So stay with us. We, we have a conversation, plus your comments and your experiences as well. Franklin Kujo is executive director and founder of Imani Africa. He's going to be joining us after this quick break. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. Oh, Jam, you're looking good, oh, my friend. Is there something you're not telling me? Yes, I'm feeling very good and strong. What is the secret? It is not a secret. My farmer used Yara Miller Activa on me two weeks after planting. This boosted my growth. Then after, he used Yara Bella Sulfan as top dressing when I was at knee length. My goodness and strength is because of Yara Miller Activa and Yara Bella Sulfan. Yara fertilizers have nitrite beet fertilizers that are readily available for plant upkeep and do not over acidify the soil. Yara fertilizers also contain micronutrients such as zinc, boron and manganese, which aid in yield and crop quality. If you want to look good like me, then your farmer must go for Yara fertilizers. They are available in accredited agri-input shops nationwide. For more information, call 0308-251-060 or visit our webpage at yara.com.gh or Facebook page. And there is more. Yara retailers can also benefit from selling Yara products by just downloading Yara Connect app and scanning QR codes on the Yara sack at the point of sale to end rewards. Use Yara fertilizers for better yield and quality produce. What does winning mean to you? For Yao, it's seeing the joy in his mother's eyes after he provided her with a state-of-the-art kitchen to cook her signature Unapu Jolof. It's a mega win. For Ajua, it's turning her passion for photography into a successful career while providing her children with the best education possible. It's a mega win. For Kwame, it's becoming his own boss and starting his music business. It's a mega win. Whatever winning means to you, Mega 6 Lotto can help you achieve it in grand style. With only 49 numbers to choose from, the odds are always in your favor. Play with as little as two Ghana CDs for a chance to win millions of CDs every week. Download our Android and iOS apps. Dial star 266 hash or visit Mega6Loto.com to make a mega impact on your life and the lives of others. Mega 6 Loto. 
mega winnings, mega impact. The Mega Six Lotto is regulated and monitored by the NLA. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful of M Punch Wana? And everything me do so say my name kwaye and pass one my name nyina na and me gina sabe ma na me no be fear for there e ho na nyina e dia resa you heard everything i have secret m point is my secret m point homeopathy clinic i'm free the age old rivalry that senior high schools engage in is still present within alumni the battle for bragging rights to a particular endeavor remains even after school. If your school can cook, it means your school is here. If your school can boast of good culinary masterminds, this right here is the perfect platform to showcase that skill set. Alumni have met and they have chosen representatives to take up the task of preparing extraordinary dishes to bring victory to their respective schools. Tell me what you're cooking. Week in, week out, these schools will mount these workstations in a bid to buy your nutritional affinity to them. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare your taste buds and fasten your aprons. These culinary experts are set to battle for the enviable crown of being tagged lords of the kitchen. This is Kitchen Wars Season 2. Kitchen Wars Season 2, Sundays at 5 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Sponsored by Gino Tomato Mix. And Napa Foods. Say Napa. And Ye Ono Soko. PGL. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Now, concerns have been raised over the cumbersome process in acquiring a passport, despite its movement from manual to electronic. My colleague Judith Ochitando visited one of the Accra's most popular passport offices and brought through this report. It's now so common. The struggle to acquire a passport for some has become an extreme sport. Long queues to access offices, long queues to capture your biometrics, and if you're not lucky, even longer waiting periods to get a printed copy of your passport. Yeah, I applied for a passport somewhere last year, around December, and up till now, I've not gotten it. And that was even premium. So I, I personally do not understand what's happening in the country because I've been to the passport office a couple of times and then they will tell you that uh, it's not yet ready, go and come. The long queue, certain times I may even go and then I may not even get to uh, where I would even meet the authorities to speak to. Three years ago, it seemed all was about to change when the passport acquisition process was meant to go fully digital. The early reviews were good as the system got rid of middlemen who dragged it out and profited from it. But it did not last. Complaints about a lack of printed material caused long details in issuance of passports. It is frustrating those who desperately in need of passports. At times I wonder if you are still living in a country, a country like Ghana. I, ap I applied for my passport. That was renewal. That was in January. I've been going there. The last time I went there, I was directed to go and see somebody. Only for that person to tell me that if I want my passport within a week or a month, I should pay 600 cities. And I was like, how? The increasing concerns have now reached the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And on Monday, August 7th, the minister stormed major passport centers, vowing to restore sanity in the process. And when I say illegal activities, we all know 
Just two days ago, the report in the Daily Guide that the, the issue of Goro people involved in our passport acquisition process has become rife. It is wrong. She also said... Well, we all know it's wrong, but have systems and structures been put in place to check the wrongdoing? You know, when this... Let me take, take a look at the ranking. This UN uh, ranking that uh, looked at the average bribe size by type of public officials. Lands Commission came stops. But you know, be, because the Minister of Foreign Affairs reacted to this yesterday, that's why there's a lot of focus on the passport office. But the Lands Commission, they came tops. Take a look at that. So we were earlier at the Office of the Lands Commission to also uh, give you a, a, a scene review of what's happening there, especially because the people who decided to go there today did not get anybody to, to agree to talk to us because one of the fear of the cameras and others also spoke to us off camera confirming these cases of bribery and extortion as well. My colleague Lord Edwasari was there. Take a look. Conducted by the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime in 2021 has shown that the Lands Commission under the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources was the most corrupt institution in Ghana in 2021. Now, according to the data which showed the top bribe taking institutions in the country, Lands Commission offices collected the biggest bribes among public officials in Ghana. Two years on, we want to find out how smooth or difficult it is to transact business here following the introduction of government digitalization drive. I'm actually a few meters away from the Lands Commission. It's right behind me and you can see that I was earlier in there and was taking through the processes that one has to go through upon uh, procuring or acquiring a land. And I can tell you on authority that from what a surveyor here um, disclosed to me, things are not as smooth as uh, we have been made to believe uh, with regards to the introduction of the digitalization. That's the evidence of the situation. There's a number of you have been sharing your experiences on Facebook as we put out here on Ghana Tonight. Let's take a look at this. We can just say um, there's a few of your comments, but hundreds of them. This one here from... Uh, God figure of Fosu Eric says made very difficult by the district assembly officials just for the layout government charges a moderate uh, price but a devilish public officer with jurisdiction over Gomwa Akoti Akraman wants not less than 2,000 CDs for his pocket before getting us the document this is for the land title or any other form of document when you are trying to, as to register your, your lands Biggie Joe says, 20 years. Look at that. I mean, let's go to the next one. It says, it's, a difficult, it's as difficult as one trying to brush the teeth of a crocodile. This one from Desmonetta says, it's better you build first and save the land than to register first because you can finish building and still your land has not been registered. Land Commission, they have let people lose their lands, Basa. This one, thank you. This one here from Samson Hayfors, a very complex and it takes close to five months. This one from Michelle, I guess, says about 3,500, but will tell you to start building and you will go and come more than 10 times. Everything is not working well, you see. So these are a number of your comments. In fact, this one here, quite a tall one from uh, one of our viewers, which we'll get to shortly, uh, Alidu, we'll read Alidu's comment, but Franklin Kujo is um, founder of the Imani Africa Policy Think Tank. He's joining us on Zoom. Now, Kujo, thank you. One of the major reasons why the vice president, indeed government, championed this digitalization was to address such issues, you know, corruption and bribery in the discharge of public goods to us. Why is the situation still the same? Thank you very much. Don't forget that the digitalization alone is not a panacea. I'm sure it's the first significant step towards embedding the system and making it seamless for 
uh, operators as well as users um, to benefit from seamless transactions. But unfortunately, if the human element is obviously compromised, then digitalization may suffer. So for me, um, I'm not entirely surprised. There's still that human element. People have been, I won't say smarter, they are just being innovatively, innovative in a very TV manner and then trying to run rings around the system. So I'm not surprised this is happening. I think we need a fully honest society in order to get this, and then probably sanctions uh, if people are found out and then dealt with significantly. That's the way, that's the only way we can stem um, these negative tide as it, as it has become. But you see, this is not news, Mr. Kujo. Lands Commission, Passport Office, the experiences of people are bound, even before this UN survey. And that's what we're seeing, people sharing their experiences with us. So beyond the minister's anger, in the case of, for instance, the passport office and the Lands Commission, we know that sometime this year, some 10 employees there were interdicted for allegedly stealing 100 million CDs. So what has to be done to check and improve the system so that all of us are not victims of this corruption and bribery in there? I actually feel sad for the minister, uh, but at the same time, I'm a bit ambivalent and ambivalent to the extent that we know what to do, really. I mean, the fact that there are human, inter human problems does not mean we cannot find a significant way out. I think we need to outsource these services to maybe private actors who can do this efficiently. You recall when visas became a problem, uh, most of this country decided to outsource the visa process to um, other companies, and, and, and there have been significantly less problems with that, right? I think the best thing to do, because the government needs money, and I don't understand how a government that needs money will be crying that its, its systems are overwhelmed by, you know, thieving gangs. I think the best thing to do is to outsource it to as many um, providers as possible, uh, vendors as possible, who take charge and then pay and pay government a significant sum, really. I mean, that's the only way I suspect some of these things can be uh, dealt with. But as long as the system remains, these lamentations will continue. And I don't think, even as she left, I'm sure people who were being asked to leave their offices because they would stay there are welcome, are planning other ways of uh, maintaining the status quo. So it's not going to change unless the ministry and the government thinks of this as a service that is needed by everybody and must be provided by private actors and be done at premium services, probably tiered in such a way that people who can afford um, should, should be given the opportunity, as well as those who can afford must have very um, humane ways of assessing these, system, these services anyway. I don't understand. People need the services. Government needs money. What, what do you need to do? Just make sure you provide this. Let, let the entities that could provide the services do so without hassle. That's what I think should be done. The lamentations are beyond belief, really. Seriously. I mean, I suspect that's the only way out, really. Even with Lance, I, I don't know. But I think um, Lance administration has become a hard-headed problem in this country. And I think the many rings the, 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 the very agencies run around the system as it persists, um, the more the problems will, will persist in the way. I think we need to outsource these services in a manner that would see less and less of public actors uh, and rather more more private actors with significant returns to the I see. Well, we'll see. And indeed, these issues come up and then some responses of permanent structures being put in place to address it. Thank you. So, frankly, Kujo is founder president of Imani Africa Policy Think Tank. Appreciate your time. Coming up next here on Ghana tonight, five persons have reportedly died from the floods that hit parts of the northeast region. The fifth body was retrieved from water under a bridge around 1.30 p.m. earlier today by the National Disaster Management Organization, that's NADMO team. This was confirmed by a northeast regional NADMO director, Hassan John, who said the situation is indeed serious. And that's what you're seeing on the screen, the, the extent of the flooding um, in, the, in the area. Now, let's um, understand how things are going to play out, especially in the coming days and even tonight. And um, Rafael Osei is the manager at the Kotoko International Airport Meteorological Office. Rafael, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on 
Ghana tonight. First of all, what's the rainfall pattern looking like in the northeast region tonight? Very much. Um, tonight, we expect some few places in the northeastern region or northeast region to experience some cases of rain, but uh, we don't expect too strong a storm. We don't expect heavy, very heavy rains like we experienced them two, three days ago. But some few places around Yendi, around uh, Gushegu, Chepone, those areas, we expect some cases of rain over, over, over there this evening. And then later in the night into the early hours of uh, tomorrow, that's uh, in the dawn hours, we expect that uh, places uh, within the western side will also experience such uh, rains. But it's not going to be as heavy as we have experienced some few days ago. I see for the next few days ahead of us, how is the forecast looking like in, in the northeast region specifically? Uh, one thing is that uh, the northern part of the country, for that matter, the northeast, the mm -hmm. northern part of Ghana, we have what we call the unimodal type of rain or the pattern of rain. Unlike the southern half where we have what we call the bimodal, the bimodal in the sense that we have two rainy seasons. Uh, from April, May, June, that's for the southern half here, places like Ashanti, Eastern Region, Central, and then down to the coast. We expect uh, uh, rainfall be from April, May, June, then it subsides in July and August, then it uh, comes again in uh, September, October, November. That's why we have the bimodal. Whereas the northern half, the northern part of the country, we expect rains from April, May, June, July, August, and then September. As we enter into October, then it subsides for the Hamatan to come in. So in August, we have what we call the peak of the rainy season for the northern half. That is why we are seeing a lot of cases of flooding and those things, heavy storms uh, sweeping across the northern part of the country. So uh, in the coming days, you see we are just two weeks into August. And as I mentioned, August is the, the peak of the rainy season for the northern half. And we still expect some huge uh, rains. We expect some strong rains to still coming through August into September before getting to the end of September into October, we expect it to subside. So the few days ahead of us, we still expect rain, especially as we get into the weekend. I see. But now we've monitored the volumes of the rains there, and we've been showing some of the videos on our screen while you're talking. And you're saying more rains are expected, but the volumes of the rains, according to the NADMO officials and residents there, has been quite high this year. Why is that? It's very, um, it's happening as you, you just said. Uh, we, in the past, let's say last year, last year, for instance, it did not perform well compared to this year. This year, the rain has really performed uh, very well. We are recording rainfall even above 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters of rain for a single station or even more. Uh, one, one station recorded, I actually don't have data here, recorded about 120 millimeters of rain. You see, average rainfalls have been recorded around 50 to 60 millimeters of rain. However, we are having these strong uh, millimeters of rain, like uh, volumes of rain, as you mentioned, <clears throat> around 120, 130 millimeters of rain. And when you have such strong rainfall coming in, then you should also be on the guard and prepare ahead of such storms well but in preparing for the storms that you're talking about and more rain the people in the northeast are watching what should they be doing yes um what we need to always do is to pay attention to weather forecast right uh, in our part of the world weather forecast usually is downplayed uh, by many which is which is not not a good thing so we advise that we pay very rapt attention to to, to weather forecast, weather warnings that are issued by Ghana Meteorological Agency, as well as warnings that uh, come from NADMO, because uh, Ghana Meteor is always in, in touch with NADMO whenever there is a storm like that approaching. And NADMO also issue advice on what uh, the precautions that uh, the, the inhabitants of such places should also be, I mean, to, to avoid these uh, occurrences of disaster. So we should pay rapt attention 
to weather forecast. And then, as I mentioned, August is the main rainy season for the north, and it comes with cool temperatures, very, very cool temperatures, especially even over the southern half. Uh, from the coast through the middle sector into the to the north, we having strong winds from the from the ocean, which uh, saturates the whole atmosphere and cools down temperatures, and therefore we expect um, the temperatures to be quiet on the low, especially in the night, and then we therefore advise that we put on warm clothing, especially for uh, for children, for infants, and also for the elderly whose health usually they are usually uh, vulnerable. So that is a quick advice we would give to them. And our handling of uh, uh, waste, handling of rubbish, uh, we dispose rubbish in the house. This is a season that if you don't take care, uh, tropical diseases like cholera and those things can also we have outbreak of such diseases. So we have to also handle our waste very, very well, especially in places like this. And one very good advice we have to give is people who try to walk through floodwaters, it's very bad. No matter the agency of wherever you are going, we, we advise that we exercise some bit of patience whenever it's flat, especially places where you have drainage system. You, the drainage system might be broken, like a bridge and a gutter or something like that. Mm -hmm. You have to really exercise patience because if you try pass through these uh, rains or these floods, you might lose your life. I see. That is uh, one thing that we should take note of. Indeed. Thank you very much. Um, that's Rafael Osebuache. He is a manager at Kotoko International Airport Meteo Office. Appreciate your time. But we've just got a statement coming through from the office of the Awo Mafia. Now, it's with the actually addressed to the Honorable Ambrose Derry, the Minister for the Interior, and the attention of Dr. George Kofu Dampare, the Inspector General of Police, has also been drawn to this per the uh, letter that we have signed by uh, Agbotadua Kumasa, who is a spokesman for the Awo Mafia specifically stating on the issues of Hobachocho Festival launch, the urgent attention it reads, the attention of His Royal Highness Togbi Sri III, the Awamefia of Anglo Doko, the Awadada of Anglo Doko, the Paramount Chiefs and Wings Chiefs of Anglo Doko, that's the statement you see on the screen there, and the Anglo Traditional Council have been drawn to a letter in circulation headed as above, that is, Bochocho Festival launch, on the letterhead of a self-acclaimed Duto of Anglon and signed by one Professor Togbi Damaji IV and dated 12 August 2023. The purported letter is hereby attached for ease of reference. His Royal Highness Togbi Sri III and Anglon Traditional Council hereby state, without equivocation, that the only authority in Anglo Duko, under whose auspices and authority the Hugwetotoza is celebrated, is the Awamefia with the support of the Anglo Traditional Council. His Royal Highness, the Awamefia, therefore calls on the Sector Minister of the Interior Ministry to take immediate action to forestall any provocative actions of these sections of the Lafe clan to create chaos and confusion in our beloved Anglodoko. In the meantime, His Royal Highness, the Awomefia, calls on the security agencies to enforce the law and order in Anglodoko. So this is the statement just coming through, signed by the spokesman for Awomefia, Agbotadua Kumasa, there. So this is to the attention of the Interior Minister Ambrose Derry and the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Kufu Dampari. There's more on this on 3news.com, and we're staying the steam on this matter to definitely follow up, see what happens next. But thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana Tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Akansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.